Good morning. I'm Mary. I'm feeding my sisters in the kitchen. And uh, Linda's not with me today. Um, I'll give you a few minutes because uh, I, I've learned, I'm learning that it takes a few minutes. All of our videos are delayed just a, just a few seconds. So I'm trying to learn to not start talking until a few seconds after our video started because, uh, like I said, I'm learning that it's delayed just a few seconds. So I'm uh, going to make sure everyone uh, has hopefully got their notifications. I don't know what's going on with Facebook, but anyway, hopefully I see a few people are on. So thank y'all for joining me this morning. I am by myself. Like I said, Linda is at home. She's um, she's going to be doing some baking herself today, but um, we're gonna um, we just have to separate a couple times a week so we can give y'all more recipes. And the the recipe that I'm doing for y'all today is a banana split cake. It's not a new recipe. My mother made this back years and years ago, and uh, so most of you probably already know how to do it, but. I'm going to show you the way my mother done it. And for the ones that ha this, um, has our membership, I left out the sugar in the crust, and I will add that this afternoon. When I was getting everything together, and I looked at the recipe on the website, and I said, I forgot to put sugar in that crust. So anyway, I'll, I'll be doing it correctly on the camera this morning. Honestly, the best way to make this a pretty presentation is to use a clear Pyrex dish when you're making this uh, uh, dessert because it shows it in layers and it makes a pretty presentation. But I wanted to use this one because this is the size that I wanted to use. This is a nine by nine. You can do this in any pan dish that you want. Um, you can do it in a nine by 13 if you want to. But doing it in this smaller one, I'm using the same recipe as if it was in a nine by 13. So that what that's going to do is going to make it thicker. It's going to make a thicker slice of um, cake whenever you go to serve it. So first of all, I'm using. You can uh, you can crush your own graham crackers. My mother did. She didn't buy the already crushed, but I got the already crushed, and I'm using a cup and a half of crumbs, graham cracker crumbs, and I just noticed that. Um, um, I preheated my oven to 350. I put this in the oven for five minutes, just enough to get it kind of heated. And then, of course, you have to let it cool. I'm going to uh, pile up my graham crackers here. I get these little hooks at the dollar store. See these little, and I use these all the time on my potato chips and anything that I open that I have to close back up. So I'm gonna set this aside. Um, so I've got my one and a half cups of crushed graham crackers in here. I am putting three tablespoons of Imperial fine, extra fine sugar. And this is what I left off of the, uh, the menu of the uh, recipe. So I put three, three tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna get a, well, I got a spatula here. I'm going to stir this around a little bit, um, get the sugar incorporated with the graham crackers. And I mix this in the same dish that I'm going to use. There's no use in dirt in another one. So I just, I just mix up the sugar with the graham crackers. And then this is six tablespoons of melted butter. I'm going to stir it around. And I just pour it in here. Like I said, I just use the same dish. And that way you're not dirtying a separate dish. That's why my mother did it. Uh, look, uh, Linda is a little better this morning. But uh, and Carla, she's on her way here uh, today. And... Linda's busy at home. We just got a lot of things going in all kind of directions. Um, and you have to stir this and mash and just, I'll show you in a minute. You have to um, keep them out of the way. 
you just keep mashing it around because it'll um to make sure that oil i mean the butter um gets in with your graham crackers because if you don't get make sure that you got your butter some butter on all the graham on all the graham cr cr cracker crust uh crumbs um it won't stick it'll be it won't be uh stick and i just after i got it incorporated good i'll show you here in just a second i, I think i've got it all melted all and I'm, then I'm gonna pat it around. I'm just gonna use the, the bottom of my measuring cup to press it. I sh let me show you. Just gonna press it. This crust don't go up the edges, just the bottom. So I just take it and then, and I, I fold, I, I tilt my, my uh, cup up when to get in the corners and the edges you just pack it down and then that heat is going to kind of melt and incorporate the sugar and the butter and it'll it'll cause it to stick together and it doesn't take it long to do that you're not you're not cooking anything you just kind of melting it I hope all y'all are doing okay this morning, um, and uh, not too bad of weather. The um, uh, forecast um, I heard this morning in some parts of the country is getting a a, a lot of bad weather. Uh, it was freezing here this morning. It was uh, it was thirty. I think it said thirty two. Nacogdoches is thirty. Not right in those corners. I'm putting a. I'm using my spatula to get right down in there. To, around the edges to make sure that I get all that crust in there. So, anyway, that'll make a nice little crust. And, and like I said, you want to pat it down so it'll stick. All right. See, that's what it is. Now I'm going to put it in the oven for five minutes. Three fifty degrees. Now I better time it because I'll be able to forget. Okay. Now I've got um, two eight ounce uh, bars of cream cheese. This is I already put them in here, and you want them soft. I'm using Imperial powdered sugar in here. But first of all, I'm going to beat this. Y'all all know well, Linda uses this mixer all the time. I don't use it as much as she does. If you just want to beat your cream cheese good. It's... it's the weather is so cool this morning. <laughs> I've had these sitting out for a little while, but they weren't real soft. <laughs> but I want to make sure they're real soft and real. Okay. And now I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla extract in it. Uh, yeah, Carlos coming uh, to help me with the, the final decorations today. I haven't even gotten all my Christmas out. I haven't even decorated my house uh, because I haven't had time. That, that may sound ridiculous, but I'm telling you, I got a lot of uh, Christmas to go through. <laughs> my battery played out. This is, um, let me see. I guess I just didn't mash it hard enough. This comes with the backup battery. Um, this is two cups of powdered, uh, Imperial powdered sugar. I'm going to put that in here. 
with your cream cheese. There's some recipes that you put eggs in this. Mother didn't put eggs in hers and I'm not putting eggs in mine. Uh, you do have to refrigerate this cake after you get it done. I'm going to get all that powdered sugar incorporated, incorporated in there. I might have should have got a little bit larger bowl for this, but I think it'd be enough. Just got to get that powdered sugar in there good. gonna make a thick pie. Uh, I call it, it's called a cake, but to me it's almost like a pie. much goodies as I can off of it. This is where if you got children around, <laughs> let them lick the be beaters. Remember that? Uh, as kids, they always, whenever we'd be in the kitchen, mother be in the kitchen, it'd be one of us kids, if not more than one, standing waiting for the beaters to lick the beaters. Miranda, when she was uh, my youngest granddaughter, when she was little, she was here one day when I was making a red velvet cake, and um, she licked the beaters, and she was the cutest little thing. She had curly hair, and um, she, um, I, I took, matter of fact, we took a picture of her. It was in our in our kids' cookbook, a picture of her with, it. she had red velvet cake batter all over her face. It was the cutest thing. So, all right. I splattered a little bit of powdered sugar. And now my, the batter should be getting about ready. I'm gonna throw these papers in the trash. Okay, let me get a poke up. Deborah uh, Bannerman, this, I'm using my little uh, oven mitt this morning that you sent, sent us. And here's my cake. Now this has to cool a little bit. You don't want to put this cream cheese on that right this minute. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to uh, chop the bananas while that's cooling because the, the cream cheese mixture goes on the, on the um, graham cracker crust, but um, it's got to cool a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and slice the bananas. And uh, this is where I would uh, could use my sister's help. She could help me cut them. I always get those strings off those bananas too. And, I, and you slice them like this. You can slice them in however big thickness you want. And uh, takes depends on size of your uh, dish. Three, four, four, five, whatever size your uh, dish is that you're doing. And I'm going to put, uh, when I get through cutting uh, the bananas up, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, sprinkle a little bit of um, lemon juice on it because you ever, uh, you ever go, you ever had these banana split cakes before and the bananas gets brown inside after it sits a while? Well, if you put lemon juice on it, that won't happen. So, uh, I don't do these perfectly, but I try to get them as close as I can. I'm only going to cut up three because I'm not, don't think, y'all heard my dryer. I have been doing laundry. I have been running around here doing everything this morning. Um, 
you know, I have to, some things has, in life has to go on, whether you're planning a party or, or not. Some things has to be done. Uh, I, um, that's the string I didn't get. I, um, what I was, what I was washing this morning was the church's tablecloths. We have tablecloths on the churches on the, and when we have our dinners and get togethers and, and, um, Christmas, we had, uh, we use red tablecloths. Well, I bring the tablecloths home with me and wash them. And so I, I washed some last night and I'm finished washing them, the rest of them this morning. Okay, now I'm going to take this lemon. And I've already washed the lemon. I'm just going to squeeze some lemon over that. Over these uh, bananas to keep them from turning. No certain amount. I just as long as I get some over it, I'll just put a spoon and toss them around. Make sure that I think I think I think all of them got coated, but I'm gonna make sure. Okay, I believe that should do it. I think they pretty well got coated. Okay, and if I have to um, cut some more, I will. Throw this in the trash. You know, you have to pick up as you go, or you'd have a mess for sure. So I'm fixing to throw these in the trash. Wash my counter off. Uh, I was, I don't know, I had an Elsie on my mind this morning, and um, my aunts, I guess you might say, I had an Elsie and and uh, I, I did go through one box of Christmas things, and um, and it had something in it that I guess it kind of reminded uh, reminded me of a uh, Elsie. A Elsie um, was mother's oldest sister, and uh, she had all boys. She had six boys, and so I was the oldest girl. So uh, she, I was just really close to her because we was around her a lot. So I'm trying to. So I'll show you in a minute what I found. I'm hoping the the dish is hotter than the, the crust. So I think I'm going to, to go ahead. I guess I could strain the pineapple. I just don't want to put that cream cheese on the hot crust quite yet. So I'm putting two cans of crushed pineapple. And I'm I'm draining it to get the juice off. Yeah, I was looking to see. I thought I, <laughs> I didn't think I turned the oven off, but I did. I'm just going. I'm just going to stir this around in here like this. That will um, make sure I get all the juice out. Just stir it around. Uh, anyway, I uh, just get all this pineapple juice out. You can use whatever brand pineapple you want, but uh, I made something the other day that I used pineapple on. And uh, let me get a bowl to put this in. And um, I used the store brand pineapple, crushed pineapple. I did not like it. It it was a pale, pale yellow, and it didn't didn't have any real not a real good taste so i don't know if i'll use a store brand again or not this is these are real uh a deeper yellow and um they're uh, they have more flavor to them so anyway i'm just give i'm just giving that crust time to cool and so you, you wouldn't think it'd be that much juice in that one can, but it was a lot. So I didn't, that would mess up your consistency. It would make your pie uh, thin, you know. And you want this where you can cut it um, in slices and not, you know, squares is what I cut it in. And if it's, if it's all that juice in there, it wouldn't, 
would not work. You do have to refrigerate this pie, and you're supposed to chill it before you cut it. I'm not sure that I'm going to cut it on air this morning because of that. I'm just, I, I'm just going to, um, may have to just post a picture of it cut afterwards. I'm, um, Linda made me a, made us a, um, one of those orange slice cakes I'm going to serve tomorrow to the, to the youth that's coming out to see. And y'all don't forget that, uh, tomorrow evening at 5 30 the um we don't have uh, the youth is coming to the church coming out here to sing some christmas carols for y'all we don't have a big church we don't have a big youth group um we don't have it just well youth we don't have about six and um i don't know for sure if any of the smaller children are going to come or not and i'll tell you why it's because it's going to be really cold outside. And I had planned this for to have on the front porch. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if um, any of the smaller children are going to come or not. I sure don't want them to get sick. So this had a lot of juice in it. But that juice, I'm going to save that pineapple juice and make some punch with it. Y'all remember how we used to make uh, punch out of Kool-Aid and pineapple juice. <laughs> That's what mom always made for our parties is, is punch with Kool-Aid and pineapple juice. So that looks like that's about it. Now, I, I see here that, see that's a lot of pineapple juice out of those two cans. And here in my, in my bowl is some more juice. So I'm going to didn't strain it good enough, I guess. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pick that stuff up and, cause I don't want all that juice in my. Well, I that's this slide of spoon ain't gonna do very good. Is it? <laughs> oh goodness! Let me get a spoon that's not slotty so I can get some more of that pineapple juice out of there. Cause I would definitely use this pineapple juice in some punch. I think that's about all. It it doesn't have to completely be all gone because you want it to have some flavor, and that juice does make it flavored. Okay, I think that's all on that, and I I believe I, I believe this is I believe this is cool enough. Let me feel of it. It feels kind of it feels pretty firm. Let me move the pineapple out of the way. Move this out of the way. You know, it's just. You can't cook without making some mess. This is that uh, cool wheel, I mean, um, cream cheese and... Now, I would advise you to let this cool longer than what I'm cooling it, okay? Because it really needs to be cold. But I'm trying to do this on air and I did not want to do two of them. Uh, lots of times I've done two for that one reason, but so y'all could see it already done. But I'm getting so many things to do until, let's see. Well, I was looking for that small one, and I don't seem to see it. I guess I'll use this one. Kind of smooth it on there. Because this will, uh, if this crust is not cool and and hard, because it gets hard, that sugar is what makes it hard. That's why I knew when I looked at that recipe, I said, Mama left out, because I was using my mama's recipe, I said, Mama left out the sugar in that crust. So, you do have to have that sugar, because it that's what makes it stick together. Well, I made a mess, didn't I? It's kind of like frosting. You just kind of do it in layers. And then I'll just... And um, if you were doing an, a, a 9 by 13 inch pan, uh, this would be a little bit thinner. Each layer would be a little thinner. But I, I wanted to do it in this. I actually have a red 
square pan like this, but it's packed with my Christmas stuff. And like I said earlier, I haven't got all my Christmas stuff unpacked yet. So, I'm just... Carla's going to help me do that today. My girls are so good to me. Help me. And uh, little Linda, she is get, she is on the mend. She still needs prayer. And I guess, I guess some of y'all might have seen on Facebook that our brother Charles failed uh, one day this week. And he told me last night he was taking out uh, the trash. They have a dumpster on their property. Um, and he was taking it out to the dumpster. And he said he had a drink in one hand and a sack of garbage in the other one. And he said he guessed he was holding onto that drink and, and, uh, and, and trash bag and didn't try to catch his fall. And he hit face first on the on the uh, gravel on the road and uh, so he's got a banged up face he said he had a gooseneck egg a knot on his forehead pretty big he's just um uh, his um his legs just won't um they just don't have a lot of muscle tone in them he drove a truck for i think 40 something years and uh it met, it just, his legs just don't have much muscle tone in them. And he's just weak. Okay, got it all out. Uh, and um, Stephen, I can't even remember your last name. But you'll know who you are. You watch us. And um, I would really appreciate it if you would send us a private PM message and give us your address. Um, we've been trying to get in touch with you, and we don't, we don't have a way. But we're trying to get in touch with you. So if you would just PM us, Linda or myself or Pinky Balls, and give us your address um and also we got a box from you yesterday and it's for all of us and we will open it when we're together but thank you but that's not that's not the reason we're trying to get in touch with you we've been trying to get in touch with you for quite a while um you had um ordered a, a cookbook and wanted wanted us to autograph it and um we need to get. We need you to call us or send us a message, please, uh, with your address. We don't have your address to to send it to. So, and I talked to you, Steve, myself, and wrote that information down. But I wrote it in the book, and I have about 10 books I write in, and I can't find it. Now, that uh, that's a cream cheese and powdered sugar mixture. And um, now, I'm going to put these um, banana slices on there. And I'm going to pick them up with my tongs, put them on there. Let me get a little closer. And you just layer your bananas on there. I didn't want to touch these bananas. So I'm gonna try my best. And I may have to I may have to slice another banana. And if I do, I will. But Stephen, you know who you are. If you would just please send us your address. I got to, I went through some of my towels, uh, Christmas towels, um, this morning, and some of them I remember that y'all sent us, uh, and I don't remember the names on all of them, because I just, I just, I just can't remember, uh, I can't hardly remember what happened this week, I <laughs> said about a year ago, uh, and I don't have dementia, and I don't have all hammers, but I guess the, uh, the Lord t she told me one time when I, whenever I just uh, was real frustrated and and um, and just things was just not I couldn't remember things and 
I, I just said to myself out loud, Lord, I, I guess I'm just losing my mind. And did you know what? Um, what? Uh, I was in the car. And um, you know what came on the radio? And I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking uh, that the radio was on because it played all time. And um, uh, as soon as I said that, Instantly, I heard what they said on that radio. And did you know what they said on that radio? You're not losing your mind. You just got too much on it. <laughs> and I said, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. And what it was, because uh, I started listening to the radio then, and what it was, he was talking about people, you know, uh, being uh, depressed and, and, uh, and just really down and out. And that's what he was preaching on, but I, but I hadn't even heard it until I said that, and I heard him say, you're not losing your mind, you just got too much on it. <laughs> so I said, well, I guess that's what I, the reason I can't remember nothing, is because I got too much on my mind. So, Lord has his way of getting, getting his uh, voice heard, you know, heard to us, um, so, if you're in a, if you're in a, going through a situation or whatever, don't think the Lord don't know where you're at. He knows exactly what's going on, and he knows exactly what you need. So, and it looks like I pretty well guessed that pretty good. I'm going to cut that one in two so I can, uh, what do I do with my knife? I'll just get another one. I'm gonna cut one of those bananas in half because it's a, uh, it's just a little space there, and I want it covered. So, I'll show y'all what I'm talking about. Just a second. And that was just about the right amount of bananas. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do those cherries next. Now that's layered with the, the bananas. And now I put um, the pineapple on top of that. And when I'm putting this pineapple in here, it does have some juice in it. You just kind of have to avoid getting the pineapple. Just put the pineapple over it. It's a delicious dessert, as I'm sure y'all Y'all know. This was something that I always, my mother always made. Reminds me of Christmas because that's what one of the things mama had. It's, it's, that's the way life is. Whatever you have when you're a child, it goes with you through adult. And, um, and it just, it's just a good feeling. Whenever you um, can go back and 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 do some of the same things that your mama done and taught you to do, and um, so I think I think that's where some of the people are missing it today is not is not having get-togethers and and being with family is because um, used to they did. So that's what brings back memories for people is going and thinking about what what they did when they was a child. At least that's the way it is with us. Bring uh, Linda and I, we talk about it all the time, about different things that we done as a child and how we'd like to go back to some of it. It's, now, don't get me wrong. We got a lot of amenities today that we didn't have back then. We we never we never never was without plumbing. We we never was, but we knew a lot of people that were in my generation. Um, but um, uh, it's a lot of things that we have nowadays. We didn't have microwaves. At least we didn't. And I don't think nobody did. All right, I used all that, and as you see. You could have spreaded that pea, that that pineapple thinner if you was doing a nine by thirteen, but I wanted the thick layers. So, so here here it is so far. Now 
I'm going to leave the Cool Whip in there for a few seconds. Um, can I get out my bowl? Here it is. I'm going to drain. This is cherries. That's not the next step, but I'm going to do that next. Because, uh, I'm going to drain, I'm going to drain this juice off. As y'all know, these cherries will stain. So, I'm going to put them in another bowl. I'm going to put them in this. I'm going to use my, my powdered sugar container so I don't have to dirty another dish. You know, I've got a sink full of dishes there. I'm gonna move this out of the way. That red, those red cherries, they'll stain anything they touch. So you either gonna have pink hands or use your tongs. Pink fingers, I mean. The next step is to get the cool whip. Now I normally would use um Whipping cream on this. I went to two stores last night and, and two stores the day before trying to find whipping cream. And the stores does not have whipping cream. So, I had to, I had to get Cool Whip. So, that's what we're going to put on this is Cool Whip. You know, that's, that's what Mama always used was the Cool Whip because it was cheaper. But the whipping cream actually is better. But, and I didn't notice until this morning when I got this out, because I got two containers. One of them is this extra creamy Cool Whip. And the extra creamy Cool Whip is just a little, um, little bit creamier color than the Cool Whip. See, it's a little bit different color. So, it's going to be a mixture because... Uh, well, I, you know what? I might can get it all on here for this, but I want it. I'm just going to use this. Because that, that extra creamy, it's um, it's good Cool Whip, but it's um, kind of a ivory beige color. It's creamier. So I'm not going to put that creamy on here. I want this white. So I'm just going to put that in one tub. Cause it would it would it wouldn't be as pretty in my my opinion if I put that. See the difference in the color? I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's definitely a different color. It's richer. Get all that out. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna put this cream, this extra creamy, back in the refrigerator. I didn't notice that when I got it out of the free, uh, freezer because I had the Cool Whip in the freezer. Um, that one of them was extra creamy. I had another just regular, but I didn't know. Uh, I didn't notice it. Okay. Now, you can uh, hide these cherries or you can put them on their hole. I'm going to put them on their hole. Just, just any way you want to put them. Uh, let's see here. I probably I'm gonna put it where each each little square will get a cherry. And I may not use all these cherries. I'm probably gonna put another one over here. You know, presentation means a lot to the eye. You know, kids. You know, they're come they're gonna come near eating something that's um, appealing to the eye than they are something that doesn't look good. And there's something that you can drizzle chocolate over this. Some people does. I don't care for chocolate, so I'm not. I do have, I am going to put pecans on it, though. I didn't get those exactly in, in line. These little tongs. I love them, but they, they come, they, they slide down and they close up on me. So, I'm going to move those over just a tad. I'm making it real colorful. 
used to whenever the kids was little, or even the grandkids. Uh, when I, any time I use cherries, I'd have to buy two bottles if I was using one because they would want, every one of them would want a cherry and come back for another one. So, um, I always bought more. Now, where's my pecans? Here they are. This is three-fourths a cup of pecans, and, and, and again, you can use what, however amount you want. I'm just going to, I've got three-fourths a cup here. And because this is a, a 9x9 nine nine and not a 9x13, I might not use all these pecans. So you just, according to the size of your dish, is how many pecans you want. I'm not going to put all these pecans on here. I don't want it just covered. That's all I'm going to put on there. So... I used, I used about a half a cup is what I used. But there's my banana split cake. And I'm not going to cut it now. It needs to kind of settle and get cold. So I will cut it um, um, later on after a while. But I do want to show, show y'all something. I'm going to wipe this up here. And I'm going to show y'all something. Wipe this up. I got a little bit of the red cherry on there <laughs> stained up <laughs> when i was 18 uh my, we didn't have birthday parties every year like kids do nowadays every year the, their parents give them a big celebration birthday party we didn't have birthday parties every year on our birthdays but on my 18th birthday Aunt Elsie gave me a birthday party and she gave she made me this uh doily isn't that beautiful it is so pretty i get it out every christmas i was 18 years old when she did this um that was what 58 years ago uh, she made this for me, and it, and I just treasure it so much. There's a few little places that's coming, kind of coming unraveled just a little bit, and I don't know how to uh, crochet, but my granddaughter does, Shelly. I'm going to see if she can't fix it for me. It's just a couple little places, but I always use this around Christmas time because, and naturally, it makes me think of Aunt Elsie. She was the sweetest aunt. And then... Aunt Laverne, I forgot when this was. Uh, I was already married, but it was uh, it was um, when I first got married. She made me this one. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, I just they're the same size, and I use them on end tables and and coffee tables uh, around Christmas time. And I just treasure these two so much. Aunt Laverne is. Um, not feeling too good. She's, um, I forgot how old she is. I think she just turned 90 or 91. And she's, um, she's not in real good health right now. So you can say a prayer for her. Um, she's lived a, a good Christian life all her life. But I'll always treasure this, Aunt Laverne. Um, uh, it's just, um, something that I'll keep close to my heart. I hope that y'all have a great day. Um, I was just thinking this morning about um, when you need something from the Lord, he said ask. He said ask and you, you, should get, you will get it according to his will. Um, but I was thinking about one time, I'm, I think Linda and I might have told y'all about this. Uh, it was some of the, diff, the, one of the difficult t times in our life when daddy was in the hospital before he got a VA approved. Um, and we were kind of having a hard time. And um, we were staying at, uh, I, I could have said, said it, it was on my tip of my tongue and I can't think of it. Uh, um, in left in uh, Houston at this boarding house, um, we were staying there, and uh, the um, I, I, I just want to say it so so vivid, but I can't say the woman's name. She was a real, real Miss Miller, really sweet lady, Miss Miller, and um, 
Mother had always made our clothes. We never, never needed clothes because she was sewing for us all the time. But this is a particular time that she wasn't able to sew for us. And you know, kids, especially teenagers, you always style is changing ever so often, and you want the new, want the new look and the new style and everything. And so, at this period of time, mother wasn't able to sew, and so. I, 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 there was something I wanted, you know, a girl, a teenager. I, it was this seersucker material, mother. And like I said, mother would have made us uh, if she'd have been at home and could. Um, but I wanted the, uh, a skirt, a seersucker skirt. That was the name of the material, seersucker, a sucker. And um, so I asked the Lord. It hadn't been long before then I had heard a preacher preach to ask what you want and be pacific. And I asked the Lord, I said, I want to see her suck a skirt. And Miss Miller, there was people because she had this boarding house, uh, they was always giving her clothes and stuff. And so she brought a box upstairs to mother and said that, that we might find something in that box that we could use. And she, um, and when we got in it, there was two seersucker skirts in there that fit me perfectly. And we weren't used to getting clothes from nobody. We always was giving clothes to people. But we, I said, Mother, there's, there's the answer to my prayer. There was two seersucker skirts in there. And so um, it just made me think, you know, the Lord knows where you're at. He knows exactly what you want. He knows what you need. And he says he'll give you the desires of your heart. I didn't necessarily need those skirts. I didn't, but it was something I wanted. And God loved me enough that he gave me those two skirts. So if you're if you're needing something or you feeling alone and don't um and feel like that God doesn't know where you're at or doesn't love you, just remember he does. He loves you and he knows just what you need. So be encouraged. Just count your blessings and it just auto automatically makes you have a better day. So I'm going to end on that. We appreciate y'all following us. We appreciate all your love, your concern, and um, all your comments. I haven't been able to answer a lot of your comments this week because I am so busy, but I will get around to it. It's usually, if you get a comment like two o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, that's because that is when I, I'm not doing something else and I wake up and, I, and I'll look at the comments and I, I'll, I'll answer. So that's just the way I do. I have to, I use every awake minute that I am awake, I'm doing something. So, um, Y'all, I appreciate your love and concern. Hope y'all have a blessed weekend. Don't get out in the weather if you don't have to. Um, and we will be on tomorrow at 5.30 live on Pinky Malls. Y'all, please join us because these children are making a sacrifice to come. And I'm hoping that it's not too cold for them so I can, we can sing on the porch. Well, I'm hoping. So... Tune, uh, stay tuned for us tomorrow evening at 5.30 for some um, uh, Christmas music from the kids from the church. Bye. Don't forget to count your blessings now. Bye-bye.